So today I want to talk about the things that producers, beat makers, anyone who makes beats needs to stop doing. Good morning, YouTube, 6 a.m. About to go put in the work for all the other work. What I mean by that is I'm about to go run like three miles. An essential part of my life as a producer is working out. And it's not talked about enough in the producer music space. There's a lot of music people that just aren't in shape. And when you're sitting down all day, not only does it help you make better shit and create better shit when you work out and like, I don't know what the hell it does. It releases endorphins. It does a lot of, there's a trillion benefits for working out. And recently, I've been getting it in as early as possible. I'm finally back up at 6 a.m. again. Let's get into it. Welcome to the video. Subscribe. Let's get it. If you're trying to be a producer, you can wake up at whatever time, as long as you're not sleeping for like 10 hours, I guess, you can wake up at whatever time you want. I personally enjoy the hours where people aren't awake. So it used to be, it used to be staying up the whole night and working on stuff, but now because of my schedule with my mom and all that stuff, my schedule works best if I wake up at like 5.30 or 6. But it doesn't matter what time you wake up at, that's a big misconception. It just, it just matters what the hell you're doing with your day. It matters about the, the hours you're awake rather than what time you're waking up. There's a lot of people that wake up at 6 a.m. that don't do shit all day, so it doesn't matter. But for me, this is what's working with my schedule right now. Audio, and I'm gonna go FL Studio ASIO so you guys can hear what I'm doing here. I was gonna make a list, but I don't really have a list. I just have a bunch of things I wanna talk about. So, as you guys know, I've been listening to beats for so long now. I've been listening to beats and contests. People send me emails for the past like two years, whether I'm doing live streams or people are sending me emails, whatever, whatever. The first thing I want to talk about is sliding 808s and just going crazy ham with the 808s. So like trying to stand out as a producer and make it beats. There's a lot of people that just add too much shit to their beat. There's more things that I want to talk about, but one of those things that they add is the craziest 808 slides on earth and they sound like this. And while it's cool because you want to impress other producers, because that's a way of getting your name out there is by trying to flex on a beat. It's cool if it works. If it doesn't work, it is not cool. And not to mention, if you're actually trying to make songs and make music, it's not really going to work. And not to say that you can't do it, but if you do it, you have to do it the right way. And while we're on the topic of adding too many things to your beat, another thing that I see a lot, and this really throws off people's beats, adding just way, I don't know if it's too many, maybe it's too many, but just adding so many kicks, snares, and claps. I would say percussion and I would say other things on top of that. It's like adding too much, trying to compensate for the fact that the beat isn't just, just isn't there yet. But the main thing you notice when people add too much is like the kicks and the snares and the claps. It almost like interrupts the rhythm of the beat.
Um, another thing that I used to do a lot and that I see a lot of people doing is just trying to save one of their beats. It starts with overcompensating tons and tons of different effects and, and different transitions and different stuff like that in order to save your beat. If you can't just lay out patterns like this and listen to a loop and vibe with it from pattern to pattern, a beat that's not quite there yet, they try to save it by doing all sorts of stuff like adding crazy amounts of effects to each plugin, doing some crazy limiting and compression and then all of a sudden it's like putting lipstick on a pig is the term I've used before. The beat is just unsavable, it's just unwhatever, and you need to just scrap it and move on. And a lot of people get hung up because, say for example, if I was gonna scrap this beat and I was so hyped because there was one part of it that I really liked. It was like kind of there, but it wasn't really there yet. Some people get hung up on that. Last thing I want to talk about is that the fact that fuck everything I just said today because the last thing I want to talk about is don't listen to anybody. There's no rules to all of this stuff. At the end of the day, Sally from Michigan does not care if your kick is clipping. <laughs> I make music for people to just listen to. I don't care. I don't care what the hell anyone says about anything. I say this beats fire. That's my opinion. I don't really care if you don't think it's fire. <laughs> kind of just do what you want that's why everyone starts making music and art in general if you want to slide your tambourines and slide your open hats do it who the hell cares there's no rules to any of this stuff you can take the things i said before i guess with a grain of salt but it's just things to think about it's just things to <laughs> but yeah stop doing that thing though where you put mad kicks and snares in there trying to compensate oh Studio is looking fuego right now. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this. Make sure you drop a like if you enjoyed it. It helps out my videos. And um, yeah, if you haven't watched Sweatpants yet, go watch it. Like I said, I'm working on a new kit. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Drop a like on this video. See you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching.